Hello everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm Steve and joining me in the studio today I have Adam from NVIDIA. How are you today, sir? Good, Steve. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much for coming in. I know today we're going to talk about the NVIDIA Quadro K6000, right? That's right. That's right. Okay, perfect. Now I want to mention to everybody here at home, this is a common disclaimer we do whenever we start talking about our Quadro cards, that these are not intended for gaming. And I know NVIDIA is well known for their gaming cards. These are actually for AutoCAD based or professionals in the environment of any kind of visual processing right. or, you know, RTT design. Um, Adobe CC, um, I mean Autodesk, pretty much all right. of those. Visualization, right? video editing, anything that's professional visualization, that's exactly right. Perfect, okay. Yeah. So don't purchase this card or don't even think about purchasing this card if you wanted to spend the money on a video card. You, for gaming, you're going to want something other than a Quadro, although it could still do it. That's right, it's a great gaming card, yeah. but yeah, yeah but, it, but it's but designed for other things. Correct, exactly. and I just don't want you guys to be disappointed with it. So, that's right. Um, that being said, uh, what can you tell us about uh, the, the K6000? Sure. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll just start with um, sort of explaining um, kind of what, what's going on in the industry. What, what's, mm. what's really interesting is there's there's a, there's a common problem that a lot of our customers have. Um, customers in the media and, and entertainment creation, um, people who are in doing visual effects, animation, video editing, um, visual storytellers. Um, have, have they're, they're, they're one of the big things that they're struggling with right now is the complexity of their work is getting incre incredibly high. Right. Um, so they're trying to make better stories, more compelling stories, um, and they're trying to do it for cheaper, and they're trying to do it under more compressed um, time frames. And so mm -hmm. they're, they're really struggling with how do they sort of reinvent their workflows. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for technology to be able to, to help them um, basically make decisions, uh, better decisions faster, mm -hmm. um, using better, you know, better visualization technology. And at the same time, we've got on our design and manufacturing um, segment, we've got cust customers who are trying to design uh, products um, better products, faster, and, and again, the same kind of things. They're trying to do very complex work under, under, under time pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and the commonality is that a lot of the problems that they're trying to solve is very, very um, graphically intensive, mm -hmm. compute intensive, but they're big problems. The workload is huge, and what it does is it requires a lot of memory, mm -hmm. a lot of computational horsepower, a lot of GPU horsepower. And that was really what was the genesis and what was the, the intention of, of the K6000 to solve problems for these sets of customers. Nice. Okay. So something I, I did notice, I mean, the K6000, that's a K-series, yeah. right, right, Quadro, which Kepler. means it's Kepler-based, yeah. right? So GK110. That's right. Now, I, I do know some basic differences. So instead of the Titan, how it has 14 SMX units, one of them disabled, mm -hmm. you actually have all 15 enabled right. on this particular chip. That's right. So, and then on top of that, you said more memory was involved. That's so right. Go ahead and, and, and you know, lead us through the specs Sure, here. sure, so. sure. So, so compared to our previous um, flagship product, the, the, Quadro, uh, the Quadro 6000, mm -hmm. Um, we didn't just incrementally, uh, you know, increase a little bit of performance, a little bit of memory. Uh, we literally increased computational, GPU computation um, performance by 5x. Wow. So this has got uh, 2,880 cores right. of, of CUDA cores. Um, we didn't just I incrementally add a few gigabytes of frame buffer. We actually doubled it. Went from six gigabytes to 12 gigabytes on, on this card. Very nice. Um, so this is this is not just the world's most powerful uh, GPU, the most powerful graphics, but it's also the, got the most memory. And so literally, from Nvidia's standpoint, this is the best card we've ever ever designed. We've this is this is this is truly our flagship uh, visual computing product. Something I also want to mention too, because you were talking about you know uh, the ability to solve more problems in the industry, and right. one of them was cost and I yeah. know power consumption. So how does this handle power consumption? You know, acro across all of our Quadro products, we tend to, um, it, you know, as, a com as compared to gaming, mm -hmm. we tend to, to reduce power quite a bit um, because power, noise, acoustics, um, it, when you're deploying one card in a basement to do some gaming, it's different than deploying tens or hundreds in, in an IT environment, in, a, in right. an office. And so form factor power um, is a big concern for us. So, so the K6000 is 225 watts. Mm -hmm. um, so it certainly is, is a low power. And you'll see that across all of our Quadro products. Generally more memory, lower power, smaller form factors. And nice. really it's to be deployed into, into um, into companies that are deploying multiple PCs or workstations. Right, because if you have you know a hundred of these cards lined up, I mean exactly. that that basically multiplies your your bill by a hundred. That's right, and That's your right. or your noise levels by a hundred. Power, the heating of the room. Th right. There's a lot of things that go into it. Absolutely. Right. Unless you live in a cold area, then you're you know That's you're right. looking forward to that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, can we talk a little bit about the anatomy of this card, just to Absolutely. kind of show everybody here what, what they're looking at? Sure. Sure. Right. So this is a dual slot card. 
Um, this is based on a GK180, uh, so this is our, you know, this is our top-end uh, GPU. It's dual slot. It's got uh, two DVI ports and, and two DisplayPort 1.2 ports. Um, as you can see on the back, we've got you know a, a lot of a, a lot of memory here. This is all of our 12 gigabyte memory. Nice. Um, you'll also notice that on our high-end cards, uh, we also incorporate some some high-end um, display uh, capability. So we've got SDI um, nice. capability. So there's serial digital interface. Serial yeah. digital interface. So input and output serial digital um, uh, interface. Um, so high definition video, we can do compositing on the GPU and then spit out composite, you know, um, uh, video. Nice. We also have a sync capability. Obviously S SLI capable, and also we've got a stereo for for um, for again synchronized stereo, you know, th 3D stereoscopic stereo displays. Excellent. Yeah. Put this back up here. Absolutely. For you. Also, mention one more thing too about power consumption. We we mentioned this earlier, uh, just that it has two of the six-pin PCIe power that's right. cables. So that's right. As opposed to the Titan, that would take an eight and a six. Yeah, so. exactly right. So Adam, there's a ton of horsepower here. I saw on the website that there's a couple quotes from different production companies you guys are working with. What are some of the advantages they're getting from this particular product? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, the the K6000 arguably um, has been designed to allow people to do things that they've never been able to do before. Mm -hmm. And um, so we gave, you know, we, we designed it, we gave the card to a number of our, of our most demanding customers. Um, and and the, the feedback has been pretty incredible. Uh, Pixar, um, from, from a media and entertainment standpoint, was one of the first that, that got this card. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and arguably, Pixar and any visual storyteller, at, if you distill what they have to do down to its barest uh, essence, mm -hmm. I think it would be to convert light into emotion is one way to was okay. one way to put it. Sure. And so lighting is a big deal to Pixar, and mm -hmm. it's a big deal to anyone who who does any kind of visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. And their challenge, uh, you know, as I talk about people trying to invent their reinvent their workflow, is how do they get better, more realistic lighting earlier into their workflow? So when they're setting, you know, when they're putting together a scene. The, 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 to the extent that they can get the lighting right and, and, and get nice textures and get, get the look and feel right, they can, they can make better decisions you know, earlier on the, in, the, in, the, in the project. And so that ends up being a, a GPU computation problem and it also becomes a, a memory problem because a lot of these scenes are very complex. Anyone who, who does work in Maya, for example, mm. A lot of times they want to do really rich, richly textured scenes, um, but people make a lot of trade-offs. So Pixar was able to use the K6000 um, using uh, optics, which is an NVIDIA technology, mm -hmm. and, and is able to do incredible, um, incredible work. And they did it on Monsters University, actually, incorporated into their workflow for the first time with that film, um, and use, the, you know, use this technology to, to basically get their lighting um, correct mm -hmm. and, and arm their artists with much better technology to make better decisions. Do, uh, does optics actually employ any kind of ray tracing as well? It does. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So optics is kind of a framework to, to help you know do 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 path tracing and ray tracing. Perfect. So you have that you know a person's face that has that slight translucency. That's right. And then That's the, right. and it's just pretty much just mapping all the photons and exactly how they're going to bounce off a of said surface. That's right. right? It's totally totally simulating how light is interacting with the environment. Complete simulation of light. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And so perfect. so Pixar was one of them. Um, mm -hmm. Another set of cu customers that that utilize the, uh, the K six thousand is people who design products. And, and one of the problems that, that um, wh when, you're, when you're building a product and you want to you you do a, a collaboration, you and I, you know, mm -hmm. we want to build something and then we want to you know, talk about the design, how it looks you know, in a real, realistic setting in context. Uh, again, rendering becomes really important. Right. And so one of our customers, uh, Nissan, was uh, their big challenge was they want to take a huge you know, the, 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 the example is a Pathfinder SUV. They want to take this huge model mm -hmm. in the CAD, in mm -hmm. the CAD model, dump it directly into a rendering um, software and do ray tracing on, on, on it without having to do a lot of data prep. Nice. A lot of times, these are huge, these are, you know, sometimes 60, 80 megapixel or m million polygon, sorry, uh, model. Um, they have to pull out a, the, the wiring harness, they have to pull out the transmission, they have to pull out the engine mm -hmm. just to, just to just to get all of that data into uh, uh, the graphics memory. Right. And with 12 gigabytes, now they can take nearly that whole model and put it right into a rendering engine, um, a rendering application, and do some iterations on, on rendering, um, allowing them to do more iterations, more design iterations, without waiting. Literally, they would have to spend weeks prepping before they could 
before every rendering. So they'd generation. have to essentially edit the model that they currently already have, That's already right. ready for production, That's instead right. of having to edit it all, just throw it directly into right. it and then just skin it all up and make it look beautiful. Exactly. And, so. and now with 12 gigabytes, they can nearly take the whole model and just dump it in. Nice. Do a render. Uh, I want to change an edge. I want to change the color. Mm -hmm. Okay, change it. You know, do it again, do it again. And so this really fundamentally changes how people can do their work now. Mm. Um, they don't have to spend a lot of time. And, and what's really interesting as we talked to more and more customers, mm -hmm. um, we found that there's a lot of workarounds that people do. They're, they trim down the work they can do so that it fits into memory or, or, or you know. And, and it, the other interesting, really important part about the K6000 is that a lot of these problems aren't just a memory problem. Mm -hmm. It's actually a combination of you need memory and GPU horsepower. And it's right. that combination. And it's the combination of a lot of times the, the you know, in, NVIDIA technologies like CUDA or Optics that help make um, this, this really a fantastic solution. All right, Adam. So one thing I did find out about and I want to double check with you is how 4K production is now becoming a much bigger thing on YouTube. So I know there's a lot of viewers out there that can or want to start doing something like this. And that requires a lot of horsepower, 4K, 6K, I mean, crazy resolution. So right. um, what can you tell me about this card and that type of production? Sure, sure. I mean, so, so I think most people know that you know, the 4K, as an example, is, is literally like 4X, um, mm -hmm. 1080 um, resolutions. Um, that's 4X the amount of data. And mm -hmm. so that ends up you know, uh, translating into, into you know, multiples of, of horsepower that you need out of your graphics card, multiples of, of memory that needs to be stored. Right. Um, so 4K tends to, to, to crank up the requirement for, for graphics. And, and, and the K6000 is, is a great example of, of a card that can handle it. One really, really exciting new set of news that's just came out um, recently is, is that RED, uh, for those folks who are using a RED workflow, RED camera uh, and, and their workflow, uh, the, the Red Cine X Pro is now going to be GPU accelerated. Nice. And, and, and with sort of the, at the same time, you know, Red's come out with their 6K Dragon sensor, mm -hmm. uh, which is an you know, insanely, incredibly high resolution sensor. Yeah. Um, it needs this kind of horsepower. And so uh, with GPU acceleration, you really don't necessarily need a Red Rocket anymore. So the, the investment in a GPU can, can essentially take over what you needed the Red Rocket to, to do for you. Um, so that's that's a huge that's huge news news for customers, and, and the K six thousand is going to be certified on it, um, and it's a great product for for red workflows. So for all the IT users out there that are that are basically purchasing these cards for production companies, they want to mm -hmm. know why upgrade to Quadro cards in general. So Quadro, are, you know, arguably, as, as I mentioned earlier, is is designed to be deployed into uh, environments where uptime, reliability, um, workflow. Um, is very important, um, and, and that and that the, the, the graphics, the hardware needs to be certified and guaranteed to just work and mm -hmm. work for 24/7 for weeks and weeks on end, mm -hmm. um, and that's what Quadro is built for. Um, so what we do with Quadro is we actually take um, you know a fairly similar base hardware mm -hmm. as, as from gaming cards, but we we tend to um, we do a lot a lot of certifications on it. Uh, we, we certify over 100 plus pr professional applications, meaning that um, a given driver. Uh, has been certified and all has been bug fixed to just work perfectly on you know any Adobe product or any Autodesk product. Uh, so no matter when when people's workflow start to incorporate one or two or three or ten professional applications, a Quadro card will be certified to, to, to just to just work. Another another in important thing is warranty. We've got a great great warranty. Um, you know, and so when you buy it on on Newegg, you get a three year warranty. Nice. Um, that's really important. The other thing that's I think really critical that not a lot of people understand is that um, uh, is that a single Quadro, a K6000 or a K5000 or a K4000 or a K2000, any Quadro card has been designed and manufactured by Nvidia, and and that's really important so that when you go and you need to add another K5000 or K6000 to your company in a week or a month from now. Um, it's going to be available, and it's actually going to be built by us. What's different about gaming is that gaming um, tends, gaming cards tend to be built, um, and, and and sort of uh, the, the cadence of refreshing these cards is a lot faster. It's a lot more for a consumer audience, mm -hmm. so the availability tends to be quite short. So in a year from now, a given gaming card probably won't be available, and that's we we get that a lot with our customers, and, and they're very upset about that. But Quadro is very different. So for example, if you were to look on Newegg today at, at a GTX 660, mm -hmm. you're going to find multiple 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 flavors, each having a, maybe a different configuration, a different specification, a different heat sink you know, size. Um, and that's really important. Any Quadro that you buy, a K6000, 5000, or, or all the way down, is going to be the exact same card no matter when you buy it or where you buy it in the world. 
And it's really important for customers to, to understand that how, how different that is from Quadra versus gaming cards. Perfect. Adam, I want to mention something else because you were talking about deployment. So can I, the way you SLI a normal Kepler card for gaming, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have identical cards. How does SLI work with the Quadro, the Quadro series? Sure. SLI works in very much the same way. Okay. So, so you, you get multiple of the same Quadro, and you can put them together to, to get into an SLI configuration. Okay. It's the same, same thing. And then you're going to also scale really well, I'm assuming, then, right? That's the right. The same way, so you get you know, twice as much performance, you drop another card in there. That's right, that's right. And that's actually maybe an important point to talk about Maximus. So okay. Maximus, if, if people aren't familiar with it, is, is our technology to be able to scale your performance when you drop in multiple professional NVIDIA cards. So it could be a Quadro and a Tesla, mm -hmm. or it could be multiple qu uh, Quadros in a system. So, you know, a dual case 5000 or a dual K6000. Um, basically scales up your computational performance by nearly 2x. So I know in the prior version of the Quadro, we basically could take a Tesla card and a Kepler card and throw them together, and what it would do is use the Tesla to almost do the mapping and the skinning and all the computation will be done on the Quadro. Yep. How is that different here? It's absolutely the same thing. And, oh. in, and in fact, the K6000 mm -hmm. uh, is an incredible computational horsepower engine. Mm -hmm. um, so you can easily take your existing sy system with a, with a, with a Quadro Kepler mm -hmm. and, and add a, a K6000 to the system, and you're going to have an incredible, an incredibly powerful uh, performance system um, that can do visualization and, on, uh, similar, you know, simultaneously to doing computation. Or you can actually scale up, you know, you gang all the, the cores together to get an incredible you know, scaling of, of computation performance. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome, Adam. Thank you so much for that information. This is some serious horsepower we're looking at here, and professionals out there everywhere, I'm sure, can take advantage of it. Absolutely. So thank you once again, Adam, for coming in. Thanks, Steve, for having me. No problem. And if you guys like what you saw today, go ahead and click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.